common good. In today's lecture, we shall learn how to obtain equivalent electrical circuit of a transformer, of a real transformer. Uh, an ideal transformer is represented by this symbol. We have uh, primary winding, secondary winding, these two lines to indicate the core of the transformer and uh, dot notation which indicates the sense of the winding that is whether uh, this uh, winding is wound clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, you also remember the differences between a uh, real transformer and uh, ideal transformer which were discussed in the last lecture. An ideal transformer is a lossless device and reluctance of the core of the transformer, ideal transformer is zero. For a real transformer, a real transformer is not a lossless la device. There are different, uh, different reasons for the losses. Uh, the first uh, reason is the losses, this winding, primary and secondary winding, these have uh, their resistance and when current flows in the windings, there will be I square or losses in the windings of uh, the transformer. These uh, losses were called copper losses. Uh, another source uh, of uh, power losses is the eddy current losses, that is uh, this chaining flux which flows in the core of the transformer not only links with the primary and secondary winding but it also links with the core itself therefore it induces voltage in the core as well and due to the voltage induced in the core uh, current flows these currents are called eddy currents and the flow of current in a resistive path that results into losses so these losses are eddy current losses. Furthermore, there are hysteresis losses uh, here in a ferromagnetic material. There are domains which get themselves aligned with the magnetic field. So alignment and disalignment of these uh, domains that also results into uh, loss of energy. That loss is called hysteresis loss. And hysteresis loss is uh, proportional to the area of the hysteresis loop as we discussed earlier. Furthermore, a real transformer, the reluctance of the core is not uh, zero uh, and the consequence is that uh, not all of the flux is constrained in the uh, core of the transformer. Rather, there is also leakage flux, that is some of the flux flows through the uh, air. So that is leakage flux. Furthermore, uh, some of the current uh, is required to cause the flux to flow in the core. That current is called magnetization current. In an ideal transformer, in the last lecture, we studied that uh, magnetization current is zero. However, in a real current, we have a magnetization current. Uh, so how to incorporate all these effects into the equivalent electrical circuit of a transformer. We are going to discuss this in uh, today's lecture. So we start with the copper losses, which is the simplest one to incorporate. So here is uh, an ideal transformer. How we can incorporate copper losses? We can just append a resistance over here. Resistance which is the resistance of primary winding, uh, let's uh, call it Rp, and similarly resistance of the secondary winding, Rs. So this effect is very easy to incorporate. Resistance of these windings can be represented over here. Uh, let's uh, first talk about leakage flux. So how to incorporate the effect of leakage flux uh, in the equivalent circuit of a transformer. In the last lecture, we learned that uh, the average flux which links with the primary windings denoted by phi p bar, that consists of two parts. Uh, the flux which links both the coils and flows through the core of the transformer, that was denoted by phi n, the mutual flux. And the flux which leaks into the air uh, on the primary side that was represented by 
the leakage flux on the primary side. We know that the voltage induced uh, is equal to uh, Vp is equal to Np d phi uh, d phi p by dt, uh, which can be written by splitting it into two parts. That is Np uh, d phi m by dt plus Np d phi lp by dt. In an ideal transformer, there is no leakage flux and Vp is simply equal to this one, Np d phi m by dt. So this part uh, of this voltage has already been incorporated in this symbol. This symbol is for ideal transformer. How to incorporate this part of the voltage? That is the uh, part due to leakage flux on the primary side. Uh, let's uh, denote uh, this part by uh, ELP, the voltage due to the leakage flux on the primary side. That is equal to. So what we observe is that this flux, leakage flux, it depends upon the MMF on the primary side. And MMF, you remember, that is equal to number of turns on the primary side multiplied by the current in the primary. That is equal to uh, the leakage flux on the primary side multiplied by the reluctance of the path followed by these flux lines. This R or over here is the reluctance of the path followed by these flux lines, leakage flux. Uh, this expression can be simply rearranged to write it in this form. Phi LP is equal to NP IP over reluctance. And uh, one more reluctance that is uh, the permeus and P, where this symbol is for permeus. Permeus is inverse of reluctance. That is, P is one over reluctance. Leakage flux is given by N P, I P, and permeus. If we substitute this expression for leakage flux over here, we get this relation here. Np is a constant, permeus of the path followed by these flux lines, that is also constant. So we can take these two constant, constants outside of this derivative operator to get this relation Np square permeus dIp by dt. Here Np is a constant, permeus is a constant, their product is another constant. And we can uh, give this constant another name, for example, uh, LP. The product of these two constants is given another name, LP. So the effect of this leakage flux can be equivalently written in this form. So have you seen such an expression in some electrical component? Uh, you can see that, you know that, working of an inductor is governed by a similar expression. For an inductor, voltage across inductor is given by L D I by D T. This expression is quite similar to this expression. Therefore, the effect of leakage flux on the primary side can be incorporated in this equivalent electrical circuit by appending an inductor over here. LP. Inductive reactance of this inductor is JXP. You know that uh, XP is simply equal to 2 pi F into LP. Similarly, if we look at the secondary side, on the secondary side, the same is the case. Uh, the total flux which links with the secondary winding consists of two parts, mutual flux and the leakage flux on the secondary side. And then by similar manipulations, what we see is that the voltage induced, uh, voltage due to leakage flux, that is equal to Ns square di, uh, Ns square, and then the permeance of this path, uh, uh, this P, this permeance, 
permeates of the path followed by this, these flux lines may be different from this permeance. So if you wish, you can use different notations, symbols. And uh, therefore, the effect of this leakage flux can also be incorporated in the equivalent electrical circuit by appending an inductor over here. So we have incorporated the effect of copper losses. We have also incorporated the effect of leakage flux. Next, we talk about these uh, three effects. That is the effect of eddy current and losses and hysteresis losses and magnetization current. From the discussion in the last lecture, uh, we can uh, sketch the graphs for all these uh, currents uh, over here. We had sketched uh, these graphs in the last lecture. The primary voltage was uh, sketched like this one. This is Vp of t and the flux uh, flowing in the core that is this is phi of t and from the discussion in the last lecture we remember that the magnetization current uh, was in phase with this flux and that had this shape sinusoidal and when this flux uh, reaches its maximum and then there was a peak in the graph for the magnetization current. So this was the graph for magnetization current. If uh, this transformer is working in the saturation region, this peak will be higher. However, if the transformer is working in the linear region, which is the case for uh, most of the transformers, uh, then this peak will not be so significant. and This is the graph for magnetization current. So what we observe is that this magnetization current lags the primary voltage by an angle of 90 degree. This magnetization current lags the primary voltage by an angle of 90 degree. And uh, this magnetization current depends upon, uh, is proportional to the flux, which is proportional to the applied voltage. So, what we can do, how to incorporate this in the equivalent electrical circuit. Uh, here, this is, uh, if uh, this secondary current is zero, then no current will be flowing through this one, because this is an ideal transformer. However, in a real transformer, even if secondary is open circuited, this current is flowing. How to uh, do that? So, this effect, can be introduced into the equivalent circuit by appending an inductor over here. That is the current. Why inductor? Because uh, this current lags the voltage by an angle of 90 degree. And in an inductor, current lags the voltage by 90 degree. Why parallel to it and not in series with it? Because it depends upon the voltage, primary voltage. Uh, so, this current which flows in this is IN, magnetization current. And this inductive reactance is denoted by JXN. Magnetization current can be, this effect, this effect can be rep, uh, represented in the equivalent circuit by appending an inductor over here. So we are left with uh, these two things uh, which we took together we call them uh, IE plus H. Uh, their effect uh, was introduced in the uh, by this current and uh, we had also sketched this current. Uh, this current was in phase with the primary voltage and otherwise uh, this was uh, sinusoidal however due to this hysteresis effect, this became something uh, different from a sinusoid. So this current is IE plus H to incorporate the eddy current losses and hysteresis losses. This current uh, is in phase with the voltage. So what electrical component can be utilized to uh, 
incorporate this effect in the equivalent electrical circuit, a simple resistor R denoted by RC. C for the core losses. These two losses together were called the core losses. And we also remember from the, our discussion in the last lecture that there are no power losses due to magnetization current. And here in inductor, you already know, inductor does not consume any energy. These are losses. So these must be represented by resistors. So this is represented by resistor over here. This leakage flux also does not cause any power loss. These power losses, these are power losses. So therefore, these are represented by uh, a resistor. So this is an equivalent electrical circuit of a transformer. And uh, to analyze electrical circuits with transformers, we have already talked about the strategy to do, do that. How do we proceed to analyze electrical circuits with transformers? What we do is we refer all the quantities from the secondary side to the primary side or vice versa. All quantities from primary side to secondary side. This facilit facilitates our analysis. So if we just uh, refer all the quantities to the primary side, this is the equivalent circuit with all quantities referred to primary side. So how do we do that? How do we refer all these quantities? We just eliminate this transformer multiply all these impedances with square of the turn ratio. So here the square of the turn ratio. What is this voltage? This is Vp. And this what is this current? This current is Ip. And what was this current? This current was Is. And this voltage is Vs when we refer these quantities to the primary side of the transformer we have uh, a v s and this current becomes i s over a we represent all the things in phasors using phasors so this voltage referred to primary side it becomes a v s i s referred to primary side becomes i s over a uh, otherwise, we can also refer all the quantities to secondary side. If we do that, uh, we shall have this equivalent uh, electrical circuit. Uh, what we are doing is we are refing all the quantities from the primary side to the secondary side. So this resistance will stay Rs. This will be Jxs. This voltage will be Vs and this current will be Is. And uh, if we refer all the quantities from here to this secondary side, we have to multiply the impedances by inverse of the uh, square of the turn ratio. That is, this will be Jxp over A square. This will be Rp over A square. Uh, this will be Jxm over A square. Rc over A square. What about this voltage? This voltage was uh, Vp over here. When referred to the secondary side, it will become Vp over A. And what about this current? This current was Ip. And now it will become Ip into A. A multiplied by Ip. So this is exact equivalent electrical circuit of a real transformer. Uh, this is the same circuit with all quantities referred to primary side. This is also the equivalent electrical circuit of a transformer with all quantities referred to the secondary side. Uh, basically, this uh, electrical circuit and also this electrical circuit uh, is uh, uh, somehow tedious. If we have uh, more number of loops, uh, then it will become more difficult to analyze such circuits. Although you have uh, uh, analyzed uh, more complex electrical circuits in your circuit analysis course. However, uh, this analysis uh, of the electrical circuits involving such complex uh, circuits will be quite tedious. Therefore, uh, what we do is we sketch a simplified equivalent electrical circuit of a transformer. Uh, 